Alright, ready to run through to the end of the game? I am. So, we gotta make our way to the air temple still. Okay, I gotta do jump shots with this guy. Yeah, someone did for you to get out of here. Oh my goodness. Bird man. I think that's actually the name of them if you look in the credits. So, <laughs> there's that. The lore checks out, honestly. I'm up here. There's actually a dude that cock blocked all my shots. So that's cool. Um, but there's actually a chest up here that contains some money action. Wow, I can almost buy the armor, dude. Nice. Thankfully, these ones are positioned in a decent way that you can kind of like snipe them. Uh, I still got hit because I'm a jackass, but I digress. So, um, over here, we finally made it to the air temple. Get jump, please. My nose is really itchy. It's very unfortunate. I keep like stopping to like itch my nose. Oh well. Um, these snake things actually are very erratic, so I tend to get hit by them more often than I should because they just tend to move back and forth whenever they feel like it. Which is dumb. But anyways, when we uh, get the air magic for this uh, area, we're actually going to leave it immediately because there's a ton of stuff we can do with the air magic as a result. And a lot of that will make this place much easier. By the way, we're going to introduce what is one of the worst enemies of the game, Wiz Ropes. They teleport around and fuck everything up, frankly. And they're invincible when they're teleporting around, as I mentioned. So, and they have not that much HP, but for an enemy that's really hard to hit, they have a lot of HP. Also, why am I not moving? Hello? So this uh, temple, I don't really know a good route through it, unfortunately. Um, yeah, it, get out of here. But I'll well, more into that when we actually uh, start doing it. It's a kind of a very much a mess as far as routing is concerned. The Minotaurs are not too dangerous. You just get out of the way when they charge. They don't charge super far forward. And just DPS them down and you'll be fine. <laughs> the double hits are still really satisfying. Now with waves. Slowly drifting. Drifting away. Oh my god, spikes. So in this deadly spike room, we're actually going to fall down here and do a little bit of a weird time trial kind of deal using various magic maneuvers as well. Oh, I missed. So these ones always spawn in the same spot, so... There we go. And we'll be getting the earth magic. Or, not the earth magic, the air magic, excuse me. So the air magic, unfortunately, has it's on its own button compared to all the other spells, which is pretty annoying. Got the button I'm pressing for it, so... Um, but this air magic lets us, uh, dash. Or, like, turbo charge, more like. And you can only dash forward, um, but when you dash, you're invincible to enemies. You're not fully invincible. Oh, God. First of all, hold on, I'm in the middle of intense combat. Okay. You're not actually invincible to everything, but you're, you're, uh, you can pass through enemies while you charge through stuff. Oh, my God. Sorry, we just suck too much for me to, like, say anything. I'm also going to die. Don't worry about that part. Can you? Well, we're, well, we died. Uh, and while you charge, um, you actually keep momentum afterwards, so you can like run afterwards. It's pretty cool. And it also breaks those uh, blocks with the air symbol on them, which kind of look like claw marks. But I digress. So hopefully, I don't die on the way out of here because that would suck. But you can also dash in midair, which is pretty useful. It's a very fun uh, mobility tool, but it's the last thing you get in the game, which kind of sucks. If you got it earlier, it would be a lot of fun. But it still is a lot of fun, so you know. But then, since you can imagine that we can air dash now, that opens up quite a bit of possibilities for us to do. Oh my god. Ducking does actually shrink your hitbox, so... I really hope I don't die. There's actually quite a bit of ways out of the room still. Uh, I need Birdman to come down here. And this other thing to get over it. Die, please. Okay. Oh my god! Okay, well, playing it a little bit safe because I don't want to die. Uh, my healing item is an elixir right now, and I don't really want to use that because that's kind of an expensive healing item. Okay. 
There. Oh my god. I almost ran into that last shot. That would have been really embarrassing. Okay. So, the first thing I'm going to do with this, I think, is, since I'm thinking about it, we're going to go to, back to the wall. And we will, uh... Use some sweet air dashing powers to uh, get this elixir, I guess. So I guess I could have used my elixir there. I forgot about that. And in this um, potion, we got a vial, which I guess is super magical because it'll let us carry the super secret holy water or whatever that'll, uh, you know, let us purify the Agalos equipment. So next up, um, in the very beginning of the game, there actually is a spot that we can dash through with the air magic. Yes, it's all the way back here in this cave. Just pretty insane. Shadow spooky news, no. Uh, get out of here, nerd. If you want, you can like lure this guy down here. So you want to dare dash? Do some more. Oh, whoops! I'm stupid. I should just dash one more time. So um, you carry momentum the whole time you're moving forward. So if you upswing, you still carry momentum, and you can also glide with the with the water magic to. Uh, boost yourself really far forward. So there's some cool stuff you can do with it as far as momentum is concerned. Son of a bitch. I should've just dashed it again though. It made my life easier. Oh well. We're gonna do this some way, I guess. Oh well. I am i don't really have a good game plan for this room, unfortunately. I like, it's not that hard, but I feel like I always do it differently every single time, and every way I dare do it differently, it doesn't work. <laughs> so, I apologize. This might take a little bit, though. Fetch guy just gotta get killed a spooky guy every single time. Get the fuck out of here. Okay. Whoa, I almost fell off. Uh, there we go. That'll work. And in here is the last magic container. So, that's nice. We have full on magic now. I also sometimes try to upswing more than once, but you can't upswing unless you uh, get it back. The only way to get it back is either by landing on the ground or by pogoing off an enemy. So sometimes there's a multiple upswing, and, like in between rooms you don't get it back, and it, it don't work obviously. Uh, let me see. Let's go to Palulu Town. Because that's a cool happening place, I think. And if you remember, there's a couple things we can do here actually. For one, we can actually, uh, you could probably do this earlier in the game, but the easiest way to uh, race this dinosaur to get to the nest is with the air magic because of how speedy speed boy you move while doing it. So I just tend to do like one of these, glide, upswing, and then charge a bunch, and you end up over here. You gotta wait for the dinosaur to get over here though. Also, the eggs have different patterns on them. Incredible! I underestimated you. I didn't think a human could be this gifted. Or you are not human, maybe. Dun -dun 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 -dun. And he gives you a heart container. And you try to race him again, but he's all like, nah, son, ain't about that life. Uh. So, this door I've been neglecting the whole time is actually where the secret water is. Oh, a fountain. You can drink it, but if you have the vial, you can also fill up the vial. And the vial, actually, you can use in your inventory. You'll never lose the vial. Um, and it'll heal, like, pff, maybe like three or four hearts, it's not that much. But it's an extra healing item if you so desire that. But in this case, we need to use the vial because we need to, uh, you know, purify the Eggles equipment. That's pretty cool. So, I'm gonna go back to Celestia Village. I'm gonna buy the this armor because I can. Uh, and put it on, even though we're about to not use it because we're about to upgrade the other armor, but I digress. So we're gonna go back to Gom, is his name. Oh, oh yeah, I don't know if I mentioned this, the charge does damage. I, <laughs> I forget to say the basic thing sometimes, okay? Uh, so, make our way over here. Hell yeah, speed! The, the momentum is really cool. I love it a lot. So, talk to them. I have everything I need to unleash its true power, and we will teleport away for some reason. Why am I here? Do you know where we are? Not really. I brought you here before with blessed equipment. You need to pass the test. So, by the way, there's a boss fight here. So, have fun with that. This boss fight, you're constantly falling the whole time, and you're trying to dodge various uh, lightning. Air things, I guess? I don't know. 
You know where they are because of that drop, and then he'll try to dash slash you, so you need to get out of the way. I don't really know a good way of getting out of the way. I used to dash towards him, and now I try dashing away from them. Dashing away from him is, I think, safer, but it's a little. I feel like it takes longer for him to fall back down to like for you to hit him. But yeah, so there's a, mostly just two phases of this fight. Just this phase with the small ones, and then when we get to the next phase of the fight, these uh little air tornadoy, lightningy. I don't know what they are. These things will get bigger. But in that regard, he only really has two attacks. So this fight is not that hard. Free ball! Oh, yeah, so here's the big tornadoes. They're big. <laughs> Ow. Mostly to get out of the way, you really need to be holding a direction for a little while. So this part, you do a lot less damage on. Unless you want to just damage race them, which at this point, I could get away with it. So, let's do that. Yay. Congratulations. Congratulations. Nudicord. You have proven yourself. You have proved to yourself. So we put the Agilus equipment on. And he's going to wave his magical hand. And sparkle us. And now this purple equipment will become bedazzled. You got bedazzled purple equipment. So this is the best equipment in the game. Um, it is pretty strong. This is, let's see, 200 attack compared to 125, and 50 defense compared to 40 defense. And like the lightning sword, it also fires waves, like so. The waves are a bit bigger, I think. Um, but just like the lightning sword, you also don't fire waves if you're lower on HP. So there's that. But it's still obviously very, very strong. Uh, so there's a couple more things I would want to do. For one, I'm going to use one more usage of the air magic, which uh, is not over here, whoops. Uh, I guess I'll take the long way to get to it. Get out of here. But there's actually, uh, in one of these rooms, there's a pit you can fall into, which will take us over here. And if you dash a bunch, you'll get to a secret shop, whoa! And the shop prices here are like stupid high, because you can tell by this very expensive hard container. But I am very surprised to see a customer. And he wants uh, to set up a different business location, and you suggest your house for some reason. So he's going to take all his stuff and start selling his wares at your house, and he'll give you a big discount. Um, which unfortunately means we still actually can't buy the hard container, because it still costs six digits. So we're going to have to wait on that for a bit. But that's where the last hard container is, besides the one you would get from the Air Temple boss. Uh, I'm going to do this right now. There is sort of like... This doesn't really count towards 100%. It's more like a fun secret, I guess. But there is like, I say, an optional boss fight you could fight. Whoa. Optional boss. Like, we'll call it an optional boss fight. Sure, that's that's good enough. That was big, but bug crack be huge. So we're going to go back inside this basement. Uh, I'm doing this now since I have the Agalos gear. So I'm pretty much as strong as I will be. Levels aside. And down here... Um, there actually is a wall that you can pass through with the fire magic that you can't normally see. As you can see, this corner is kind of dark, and it's like, oh, it's a wall. But you can actually fire a, a fire portal through it. And you have to wait until you get the liar to do this, because the enemy you fight here is actually a darkness-based enemy. And uh, it is a very strong enemy. It has a very big AoE attack, as you can see, that's quite random. And... Uh, does a lot of damage. Oh crap. Oh, I don't have an herb. Oh, I just totally reset the room too. That sucks. I just made it heal. That's not good. Well, this is. I guess we're just gonna. I guess this will be a fail. Uh, so, this wave thing is actually pretty hard to dodge, but a good way of doing a lot of damage um, during this is if you can somehow get above him, you can constantly poke him. And you'll actually be safe from the waves while doing that. Unfortunately, I was in that corridor when I tried doing it, which didn't really work out that well. So, doing this is a good way of doing a lot of damage to him. During that. There we go. I put a bubble on. Oh god, sorry for that. Sometimes the volume just spikes. Uh, well, we died. There's that death of the game, I guess. That kind of sucks. I think I would have had that had I not uh, done the cool stuff. 
Um, so the game does keep track of your death counter, but if you decide to uh, just not save uh, afterwards, it won't count it as an actual death. So you can do that if you want to like get away with fake not dying, I guess. It's enough for the achievement. If you really want to fake not die, you can always mess with the game's data in the local files. Haha! <laughs> yeah. That's a thing that can exist. Um, let's try that again. Did I buy the herb, by the way? That's what I went to that shop for. Okay, I did. Yeah, I. The fight is pretty hard. He does a lot of damage, and sometimes, the, since it's kind of random on how those, like, needle things form, that can be pretty rough to do with. But I'm mostly a blame the fact that I got kicked out of the room. I wasted health there for no reason. But we'll give it a, we'll give it a good old try again. This enemy is mostly just here in this room, so because they need something to give you MP, so you can go back. Yeah, so you can find a really good spot to like stand. Uh, where the those things won't hit you, you can get a lot of DPS out there. Okay, he'll do one more. There we go. Now we'll start diving him. That probably generally means where he's getting close to dying. When he starts shitting out a bunch of bullets like that, that means he's dying. I'll just race him at this point, I think. There we go, this is good. He probably should die here, yep. And when you kill him, you get some EXP and some money. And an achievement if you so desire that. But that actually doesn't count towards 100% uh, in any way, so you don't need to kill him. Right, you get a lot of EXP actually, I just leveled. I don't think I've ever actually killed him when I'm not max level, so... Yeah. Mostly because I get lazy to do this fight more so than anything. So, there we go with that. Now we're gonna get a... I think that's about everything at this point that I can think of. So we're gonna get a move on with the game now. Which means going back to the air temple. So we have the Sword of Agalos, but we still don't have uh, the Light Essence, so we still can't get that move, the last roll that we need. So, yeah, we're gonna have to wait on that. Also, we two-shot these guys now with the Earth Spell, which is pretty nice. We are very strong. We're actually very strong and very tanky, it turns out. So, having the Agalos gear before you go into uh, finish up the Air Temple was really nice because uh, the boss for the Air Temple actually is close to fuck, if we're being honest. The rest of the bosses in the game are kind of like that, but this one I think especially is quite hectic. So in order for us to clear this temple, we need to like find a soul, flame, I don't know. We basically need to hit uh, how many did I say? Uh, it's 10. 10 is the number. And we need to... Uh, I should go... Uh, which way should I go first? We need to hit basically 10 switches in order for us to get to uh, the boss. And in the process of us getting those 10 switches, we also need to find uh, three different keys. There's a bunch of money in this chest, by the way. So when we when we break one of those things with the air spell, you can see like a flame goes away. And it goes to light like a torch kind of thing in the boss room. And once all of them are lit up, that lets you access the boss. Also, this money comes out really slowly. I don't know. I don't know either. Okay, so... Oh, I don't have the key yet. Shit. That's a mistake. You suck! At this point in the game, uh, two fireball spells should be enough to kill the whiz rub, so that makes my life a lot easier. Cause, so they can three earlier, and that's a big difference. Um, that's where it came from, from uh, when we got the air magic. We can uh, go this way, which... Oh, I wasn't supposed to upswing yet. That's stupid. I messed that up. So we're gonna do some pretty interesting air platforming. Air magic platforming. I suck. Get out of the way, Wizrobe. There we go. I'm gonna do a, a dash back because it looks cool. Doesn't do anything at all, though. So I think we've done, we've gotten like two of them so far. Three, two, two. Honestly, my route for this place changes every single time, because I don't really have a good definitive plan. Um, you can see up here, yeah, it's all two. So those are the ten we need to light up. There's one in this room just chilling, which is 
cool, I guess. Die, please. So, we have four now. Up here, we do some air dashy stuff. I probably didn't need to do the extra one, but it's fine. Oh, I definitely shouldn't have done that extra one, because now I can't break this thing. Haha, <laughs> that's bad. But I got one of the keys that I need. So there's one over here. So now we have five. I'm gonna go and break that one I neglected to do. Because I decided to waste more air magic like a jackass. You know how it is. Yeah, so you can just make it like that. Momentum! Oh, we didn't quite make it. We're at six now, I think? I don't know. Uh, what's in this room? Oh, okay, no, not that way. This way... Okay, so this room... Do some more... I actually don't know how to do this room properly, if I'm being honest. Oh, whoops. I kind of always just get hit by spikes because I run out of magic after a while, but here's a, one of the keys that we need. What's down here? Oh, right, this room. I shouldn't have come down here. This is a waste of time. <laughs> like I said, I, have, I really don't know what I'm doing when it comes to this temple. I kind of just eventually get all the switches done. If I'm being perfectly honest. Get out of the way. I'm surprised you didn't hit me there. Okay, so... I'm gonna go over here. I think there should be some additional ones I need over here. What's over here? I just did that room. Uh, there's one of the keys I need. Oh, okay, so I think actually where I messed up was I need to go back to the beginning. This is some hopping over those guys because it looks cool, I guess. So I'm making my way back to the beginning now. Clear that guy. And down here, oh, I can get that, I see, with the key. So let's do that. I got one of my keys. My key! Mikey. So we'll open up this locked door. There are some whiz robes in here, which is fantastic. And a bird man. Well, which I am doing a poor job fighting everything right now. Don't worry about that part. After a while, the wizard uh, attacking, he does that one where like he spread shots. Okay. So I need maybe like three or two more, I'm not sure. So I need to go down here. There are some awesome enemies as you can see. I hate them a lot. Okay, well. Here's a part where you kind of like race against the timer to hit all these switches. They only last for so long. I like using the bubble spell here because I think it's easier. Keeps your momentum a bit easier. And now uh, we'll end up basically on the very far right side actually of the, the tower. Or the air temple rather. This actually counts as one of the flames you need to break. Or flames, switches, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and in here is another key. So that's the third and last key that we need. We'll go in here now. Uh, here's an herb for some reason. Uh, dash in, dash out. And now I need to get back to... Is it this room? It's not this room. Uh, I won't go that way. Yeah, this is routed very poorly. Fuck it. Uh, this is not the way I want to be going. I want to be going down here. I'm gonna go down here and fall... And get this... Open this locked door, which literally just leads to one of the things you need to break, which is kind of silly. You die. I would appreciate that. So I think that's all of them, I hope. I wasn't actually keeping track after a while, which I know is very good of me. Very professional. -er. Okay, yeah, we're good to go. So, now we'll just go up to the boss. Uh, in these pots actually are hearts, which heal you, obviously. It's kind of strange this is the only boss fight that, gi that gives you healing. Anyways, this fight is a mess. You can hit either one to deal damage, um, but there's a lot of projectiles. But we're actually so strong at this point in the game on normal mode, 
that. We can just kind of swing away with the Agalus equipment and deal the big damages. Dang it. So this is phase one. And after a while, you get to phase two, which requires you to like, I actually skipped the phase two, that's funny. There's actually a part where uh, you need to like use the air magic to dash up to them because of an air current. But they're like, they get a set into their like their uh, dashing attack when you start doing it. So you, when you're damaging it during it, it won't get, they won't get canceled and go to the next phase. So I actually skipped one of the phases of the fight. And but in that phase, you just use the air magic to try to get close to them while the wind current blowing. And that phase doesn't have that much HP, though that might also be as a result of the fact that you're doing damage in between like the phases. Awesome. So we have uh, the final essence. Well, almost the final essence. We're gonna use all these essence to make the light essence, which will be the final one. And the main reason to make the light essence is it'll let us enter the world of darkness. So we can start finally going into butt cracks and doing butt crack things, I guess. I really hope I have all the chests of the game. Uh, I'll check in a bit before I actually go into the the uh, final like boss kind of thing to see if I have all the chests. I'll just look at the game's data because it tells you which percentage clear is. <laughs> I know <laughs> it's silly, but we do it just because I want to make sure. Because um, yeah, the last cutscene in the game is very long and unskippable. So if you remember, um, we actually uh, let that shopkeeper. Uh, post up shop near our house, so we're gonna go there now because we actually have the money to uh, buy the damn heart container. This is the, the best place in the game to buy uh, stuff because it's the cheapest. It looks like it only costs 10k here, and this heart container now costs 150. I don't know, 125, what the fuck? In other words, this is somehow the another game of this style where the best place to buy items is at your house? Question mark? I'm not sure how that happened, but it did. <laughs> I thought it was 125. Not again! Alright, well, I guess we'll buy it later. Let's go ahead and go to the castle. But we're gonna talk to the alchemist now, who's gonna make us the light element. The light essence, excuse me. With the powers combined! Ma T with the power of heart! Amazing. <laughs> Christmas miracle! You have to the essence of light. Yay! So with the essence of light, the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to get uh, the final scroll of the game. Which we you already know it's over here. But we need the light essence and the sword of Agalos in order to uh, get it. I think it has to be the upgraded sword. Um, in order for you to get it, it just makes the most sense. So he just does the normal dialogue now. Take this. And this gives you the Firefly Scroll, which allows you to do a charge attack with the Sword of Agalos. You can only you have to have the Sword of Agalos on to equip it to do the move, and it makes you swing out a ball of light, which lingers for a bit, um, which is actually really useful for doing a lot of hits to bosses because it's a stationary thing where you're like dodging around a bunch. You can put a stationary thing to attack and deal damage while you're kiting. So it's actually pretty useful. This in combination with the the Woodpecker move, the Triple Poke, will be used quite a lot. Uh, throughout the rest of this, which is interesting to think about, but yeah. So those combat skills actually do have their fair usefulness. I am going the wrong way. So now that we have uh, the light essence, we can actually go into these butt cracks to stop evil doers. Uh, before, uh, if we can examine them and they wouldn't do anything. But now we can enter the world of darkness, woo! These areas are very simple. There's just one screen with some enemies on it. Yeah. So it's not like too bad. It's very ominous though. So once you get to the end of the screen, you'll end up in a boss fight. <laughs> Cause why not? So we're gonna be using uh, the charge attack quite a lot here because it lets us, like, like I said, when you're doing hits to stuff, it kind of like does a pseudo stun lock. Cause that makes them not moving for a little while. So this with a combination of other damaging moves that you really output the DPS. And you can charge a lot of uh, these um, balls really fast. You can actually also store it. You can upswing and then fire it afterwards, which is pretty cool. So there's a lot of like actually cool usefulness with this uh, various fire flash scroll technique. So 
Yeah. But um, the, another thing I should mention about the Firefly Scroll is that it's the only move in the game that actually costs magic to use. It costs 2 MP to use it. But you can see like we just go ham on bosses now. And it looks pretty sweet. So that's the first one down. Now we'll be heading off to the other butt crack um, to deal with that which will basically look something like this. We'll go through another single room, and at the very end of the room, there'll be another boss fight. The boss fight is different from this one, though. So there's that. I also finally have money to buy the heart container now, so that's cool. So we'll do that now. I'm missing money the whole game. Can't believe it. Uh, actually, I'm going to show this off. I don't know of a very good spot to grind in the game, but this is actually where I grind in the game, because there are two of these... Uh, or three of these uh, dark eye enemies and you can kill them very fast with a combination of the water spell and your sword of Agalus. So I just do this, so I just go in and out of the room really fast. So you get 600 money and maybe like, well 600 EXP and like 200-ish, 2000-ish money every single time you do it. Uh, I don't know if it's the fastest way to level in this game, but it's the way I do it. Also, why are there enemies in this room to begin with? I don't know. But yeah, this is what I do. I just get into that rhythm and I just do that for a little while. But yeah. So we're gonna get ahead and uh, go buy the final heart container now. After I sucked at remembering what stuff, how much money stuff costs. You know how it is. Ow. Get out of here, idiots. Getting to your house kind of sucks with all those enemies in the way. Yay, we're maxed out of magic and hearts. Woo! Oh, it was almost good. So the other butt crack is near the fire uh, town, fire level village. So we'll be heading over here. Kind of sucks you can't make that jump from over there. But, well, that was not the best usage. So let's enter this world of darkness. Wild of darkness. So same stick as before. This boss fight, I can't tell if this boss fight is more annoying or less annoying than the other one, frankly. There's, uh, this guy, he claps his hands together and makes a bunch of particles appear. Uh, I think this one is less hectic, actually, so... But, there's still quite a bit of zoning that happens as a result of him doing that, so, you know. Not great, still. Plus, he also hits you. His only other attack that he does is the attack that switches a bunch of orbs that chase after you, or that go in your general direction. So he only has two attacks actually. Not like the other guy had that much more attacks anyways. He just ends up he just makes a bunch of clone dudes. But definitely the hardest part about these boss fights is just hitting them, because the the terrain isn't exactly friendly for you. Get me out of there. Alright, that'll work. Yeah, we are really tanky at this point with the game with the armor aglow, so we can kind of like face tank most stuff. If you're playing a hard mode, uh, yeah. <laughs> you, you cannot do this. You will be taking like, you'll be getting chunked the whole time. But, since most of hard mode just, uh, at the end game it revolves around me, like, doing the boss fights as well as I can, which means like healing a bunch, I just kind of end up going to the shopkeeper a bunch and I waste a bunch of time. So I didn't want to play this game on hard mode and record it for that reason. So mostly it's the same, just with more backtracking and it's kind of lame. So, um, defeating both of those butt cracks actually weakens the seal on Valion's castle, so now we can go there. And that'll be, uh, the end of the game, whoa. Also, these enemies make noise. Why do they make noise? I don't know. Get on with the power of purple! I said get on with the power of purple! Alright, so here we go. Final final dungeon time. This dungeon is very short, and this enemy is very rude because he has an orb in front of him. But it also fires the big ass waves. Like, what the hell? So, having extra magic ups for this dungeon is really nice because they actually want you to use quite a bit of spellage um, to deal with various, like, uh, platforming kind of shenanigans. I'm gonna break get this one because it'll make my life easier, mostly. Uh, I'll, I'll use some extra ones, I guess. 
There we go. So that's like the earth section. Now we're gonna get into a watery section. By the way, there are shadow fish. Oh well. Like I said, you lose the bubble if you get hit, so. And this part is kinda wonky because I just kinda do some air shenanigans to get through it easier. Ow. Get me through! Okay. So this part we need to do some a combination of the fire spell with the air spell and an upswing to get through. I'm stupid by the way, and face tanking stuff way too much. Can you get out of here? Yeah, honestly fighting this guy is just a big pain in the butt. Because this is like a lot of zoning, because you have to constantly wait for the orb to get out of the way and stuff like that. Hey, do you re Oh, wait, I got probably this room, so... I almost did it. I did it like once in my life, and I've never actually got the room pro properly since then. So you remember the enemy that was in the very beginning of the game, that bandit guy? Whoa, there's another bandit enemy, the only other bandit enemy in the game, and he tosses a lot of knives. And it's sort of like a mini boss, you could say, so we're gonna take care of him. So when you take care of them, um, you can hit this, you'll get a move on, you can hit the switch, this takes you backwards to this room so you can uh, leave and save if you so desire. But down here is actually the final butt crack of the game. So we're gonna go inside, but we get denied. Oh no, it's Valion. He is, he is evil man or something. I don't know. I, the plot happens. This boss fight actually is fairly simple, but I like it. He has three phases, like most boss fights. This first phase, he just flies at you with his orb spinning around. This phase is... Pretty, all the phases are actually pretty straightforward, honestly. So, once we get down with that phase, we'll get to this one. This one's probably the coolest. Um, there are these constant waves that are coming at you from top and bottom, and he just chases you down. So you need to weave in between in and out, using your various uh, movement skills to damage him. Uh, it looks hard, and, uh, but it's actually not super tricky, honestly. Okay, so that's it for that phase, and this is the final phase. This is probably, uh, I would say the easiest phase, honestly. Just stay in a wall, and just deal with things accordingly. A wall makes it easier to dodge him, and deal damage to them at the same time. Uh, after a while, he'll create another one. Which is uh, the one that goes horizontally, which doesn't make it that much more tricky, but it is an extra like, layer of to this, I guess. Whoops. The only uh, hard part about this is if uh, you kind of get a time poorly with him coming at you and uh, the things going off. So yeah, how did that not bounce off of that? But there we go. That's the boss fight. What the fool! So he sends his life story at us. And yeah, and then it explodes. Explosion! On its explosion, it creates a save point. So we can save and go back and heal and stuff like that if we so desire. Uh, and I am going to do this epically live. Uh, I am going to see if I have found everything in the game. So I'm gonna go boot up the local files really fast. No, we're not cutting this part out. You crazy? So I'm gonna go to local files, check my save data. It is at 95%. That is perfect. Because the final boss gives you 5%. So that means we have found everything in the game. Your level does not count towards percentage. So we will not worry about that. So let's go fight the final boss, shall we? So, once again, more of the same stick. This is a final room. Uh, this enemy actually it does appear in a couple other locations. It is the strongest darkness enemy. It has a lot of health. Uh, I'm not gonna. F it appears like in the fire area, I know for one. It's also the enemy that uh, body that idiot in a that night earlier near the butt crack. If you remember that? That was hilarious lore. I want to level. I want to level just for, just because I feel like it. You know, you can't stop me from leveling. I, I want this to happen. You can't stop me. This is like the slowest way of leveling ever, by the way. Oh, there we go. Yes, the game is not nice enough to put you directly in front of the boss fight. So this boss fight is hectic. 
to say the least. This is the final boss. This is it, the darkness inside of all of us. Was this giant death shadow creature? Whoa, with the face. So once again, we're gonna use a combination of the firefly with the woodpecker to do a lot of our damage. Um, there are six phases to this fight. You can kind of think of it at three and three, you could say. There's this part where we're attacking the face, which doesn't actually deal damage to it. Um, but once we deal enough damage to this face, we can get to the real part where we're doing damage. The face moves up and down. Um, it's pretty hard to hit him when he's higher up like this. But once we do enough damage, we're starting to hit in the eyeball. And the eyeball is where we're doing the actual damage with the fight. Um, the eyeball has attacks where he spits out like these balls in a circle. Um, it's not that hard to dodge them by itself, but alongside like those various things that are splitting apart, that's pretty tricky. This part, um, for the next phase of the face cycle, there's a bunch of these like, uh, he'll spawn a bunch of these dudes. And actually the easiest way I find to kill them is actually using the water spill. So shout out to the water spill. This water spill actually does enough damage to just one shot him like that. So that's pretty cool. Mostly in this fight you're just hoping for him to be uh, lower to the ground so you can uh, deal the damage to him. But yeah, if you don't get him lower to the ground it's a bit annoying. Okay, there we go. So we'll go back to the eyeball. Like I said, the combination of a bunch of things overlapping is what makes dodging some of these pretty hard. And that was just bad. But uh, the eyeball is much easier to DPS down. So this, this, this final like face phase is a mess, honestly. There are very little opportunities to attack him, because he does two waves of that uh, those pillars now, and he just shits out a bunch of these four-way bullets, which is pretty annoying. And I ran into that like a jackass. Oh god, I, ran, I definitely ran into that like a jackass. You can also poke off of him. It's not the most reliable, I would say, because of the the various bullet spreads. But it definitely is an option. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and use my elixir because I don't want to die. And now we'll get into the final part. And um, this part, honestly, is uh, I think explains itself. This is mostly just a damage race for me. Because, uh, yeah, there's a lot to dodge. But, there we go. That's Agalos. That's the game. That is the final boss, and that fight is very, very difficult on the hard mode. Because you pretty much lose like four or five hearts every time you get hit at max level with this gear. Just another reason why I don't want to play hard mode. Because you yeah, gotta be careful in that fight, and being careful in that fight takes time. But we'll DPS race them, and it's all good. And with that, we save the world from darkness! So I hope you guys enjoy long cutscenes, because this cutscene is insanely long for absolutely no reason. But I guess you can enjoy the hottest of lore, I guess? That's the shopkeeper that sold us the hard container, by the way. <laughs> now he's like, what? <laughs> what was this? He did it! Yeah, there's, there's, there's no speeding up this cutscene, you can't skip it at all. This text is just going at the speed and stuff like that. Which I guess means you get to enjoy some of the the, la the weird language stuff I was talking about before. Also, this is not even like the outfit you start out with in the beginning of the game. This is the outfit you wear, you get in the forest town. Which is somehow the default outfit. I don't know. So remember, this game is not written by a native speaker and was only done by one person. So I do not have to reward you for you bravery. Shout out to you bravery. Laser beams from the sky! <laughs> Those knights are covering their face. Cover your face! That princess got blasted! Fly away to victory! What the fuck was that? So uh, the basic plot of the game, I guess I'll get to it whenever the seer decides to say something. Uh, the basic idea of what was going on is that your main character actually is one of the angels sent from like the heavens or whatever. And that uh, he just got sent down here to, you know, do the thing, save the people. And now that he's done doing his job, he's just gonna leave. So uh, there's a lot of things that make this make sense. For one, like you're like a random dude to begin with, so it's not that weird that a random dude knows how to be super powerful or whatever, you know. Um, but there are actually a lot of cool hints in the game. If you remember, the dinosaur told us that he's like maybe you're not human. Um, 
the when you read the books in the library, uh, one of the books says that all the angels know how to play the lyre, and you just so magically know how to play the lyre, by the ways. So yeah, I, it's like it's like sort of like a plot twist, but it's one that where it's like yeah, that makes sense. You know, that's what it is. But the princess is very upset right now because he fell in love with him and all that, which is what this cutscene explains, sort of. Yeah, it's it's a bit longer winded. But yeah, you are the angel called the Agalos. Which is uh, another reason another reason why you know how to uh, get the elements where like all the other people don't know how to get the elements is because you know you you are already otherworldly powerful to begin with and all that stuff like that. So you basically did your job, saved this kingdom, and then yeeted on out of there. So that's Agalos. And the cutscene is still going. Uh, it's pretty long. <laughs> The Agalos are sent to rescue and guide the Lumen inhabitants. You bravery. These two trees <laughs> kind of looks like a gate, doesn't it? Like you press up right there and it takes you to the Fairy Queen and she gives you the fairy and you do the first dungeon of Monster Boy and Monster World. Yeah. Or Wonder Boy and Monster World, excuse me. Haha, <laughs> one day. You will forever remain an example. Oh, that example. So if you're wondering if this cutscene is over yet, it's not. <laughs> it's not. This cutscene is overly long. The statue of the Agalus. Not bad. So here is the statue of the Agalos, along with the people that look like from Dragon Ball, frankly. Not the jellyfish people, not the bedazzled uh, hermit crab. So yeah, basically they they uh, put up a uh, statue everywhere of uh, the hero. To forever remember him and the things that he did, such as play music in the tavern when it was too boring to do so. Amazing. The monkey on the, the statue is a pretty nice touch, I think. And there's a statue of uh, the hero at the castle. But I loved him! That's all the princes are thinking right now. Also, the king is not wearing his crown? I've never noticed that in this cutscene. Poor princess. Star-crossed lovers and all that! Oh yeah, all the knights aren't wearing the helmet either. Dude, there's actually some pretty cool details in this ending credits uh, scene. I like it. But it is very long. And now... For... Credits. <laughs> So here's the credits roll of the game, it'll show up all the enemies as well as the staff, and the staff definitely is pretty godlike as you can see. So the design, the music, the graphics, and the programming are all done by Francois Perez. So uh, thank you for to him for making this game, it is a lot of fun, I am surprised at how competent it is for a game that was made by one person. By the way, this credits roll for the enemies makes no sense because all the enemies are like in a random ass order because there's a final loss. Yeah, so it definitely is rough around the edges in some parts, such as like the controls and some of the like weird design choices. Some of the enemies and platforming is kind of bizarre, but yeah, it's, otherwise it's really, really competent. It's quite good. Additional programming by Chris Carson. Shout out to him too for helping. Cloud Wom. Um, you can also see some of the weird uh, Englishness in some of these enemies. I think so. You you can point them out yourselves, frankly. Piranha. I will chase him down. Design assistant Julian Rocca. Like what is that? Gwarps. <laughs> maybe it's maybe the warps is saying GG. I don't know.
editor. There are a lot of people who actually uh, are on the like developing copyright thing on the bottom for this game. Not developing, like publishing and stuff like that. I don't know that details very well. Look at all these rats. They're all the same. See, it's called the Bowser, Bowser Hog, you know? It totally looks like Bowser. Impressive, honestly. I wish I got the, the golden slime drop where you got the million money, but oh well. Special thanks. I don't know why the polar bear makes noise when it lands in. Probably because this credit sequence is probably using the in-game engine still. So it actually just did its attack, because that's the noise it would make in-game. <laughs> if we're being honest. And I'm all out of drink. Just in time, I suppose. Hinch pig, it's a pig? Is that real? Is that part of the lore? That golem is rude. Is Silhouette spelled wrong? I have no idea. I don't know why the cloud's name is in a different language, by the way. Pink rain, purple rain, purple rain. Yeah, this game was made in 2018. Wonder Boy Bobby or Bobby, I don't know. Lob Strange. Bird man, there it is. There's the lore. Crawling helmet, that's what we're calling it. And there's the Dracus, the bat that flew around for quite a while there. So here's our end results. Time, 2.34. Completed 100%, dead, zero. It was actually one! And the rank, wonderful. <laughs> That's not a rank at all. Normally the ranks actually give you litter ranks, but if you have everything like this, it just says, wonderful. So I guess we're wonderful. So yeah, that's it for Agalos. Um, this was a very short game to run through. I beat this game in just one day, finished all recording it all one day. And yeah, since uh, now I have uh, some files to look at for whenever I need to look for what I'm missing 100% in the future. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for whatever uh, new projects that may be coming up. Boy.